Hello and welcome to this CDP Studio tutorial. In this tutorial, we will cover some of the core features of Configure Mode. First, we will run through the navigation features. In Configure Mode, you have the System 3. This allows you to inspect and traverse the hierarchy of your systems. Under the System 3, we have the Resource 3. This is where libraries will appear. You can use this tree to locate and add components to your system. Next, we have the Configuration Editor. In the Configuration Editor, you can inspect and configure components of your system and the properties. The Configuration Editor is divided into logical sections, making it easier to find what you're looking for. Each section in the Configuration Editor will start off expanded to the point where you can see some of its content, if not all of it. To scroll through the remaining content, we can place our cursor over the section and hold control while scrolling. This will make us scroll within the section itself. You can also scroll vertically by holding Alt, or if you have a mouse wheel with tilt capabilities, this will work as well. If you are not concerned with most of the properties of a section, you can right click the row with the property names and deselect the ones you want to hide. This is a good way to declutter and remove the need for scrolling vertically. These changes will be saved to the project folder and to your user. This means that the settings will be individual to your user and you can have a separate setting for each project. You can also fully expand the section by double clicking the section's title bar. This will expose all the section's content. To reset it, you'll have to resize the section manually by dragging the bottom of the section upwards. All the sections can be collapsed by clicking the small arrows next to the search bars. You can also collapse all of the sections at the same time by clicking the Collapse All button at the top of the screen. Next to this button, you have the Expand All button. To add new components to your system, you can use the Resource pane. There are three different ways to do this. You can drag the component you want into the subcomponent section of the component you want to add them to. You can also right click and select Add to add one, or add multiple to add up to 1000 components. You can also add components and other constructs using the configuration editor. When inside the subcomponent section, you can click the little green plus sign to add a component. You can also add signals, alarms, and parameters the same way. If you want to remove some of the components you added, you can simply right click them in the configuration window or the system 3 and click remove. In the configuration window, you also have the possibility to select several and remove all of them at the same time. All the items with dark bold names are removable. The gray items are part of the component's base and are essential for its function. These cannot be removed. At the top of the window, you have a bar showing you where you are in the component hierarchy. Scrolling your mouse while hovering the mouse over the current level will take you to the next item on this level. This is very useful when configuring items that do not appear in the system tree, like signals for example. Now I'll demonstrate some of the filter functionality. You have a search box next to the system tree. This can be used to filter the systems and components in the tree. You also have a search box in the resource tree. This will work the same way, only it will filter the libraries. In the configuration editor, we have a search box for every section and a global search box at the top. You can type different individual filters into each of these search boxes, or you can give them all a common filter via the global search box. For the next part, we will be running the system. With the system running, we are going to connect to the system and change a property. The system now has this property changed. But if we disconnect from the system, the property changes back. This is because when you are connected to the system, you will see and interact with the deployed configuration of the system, and not the one in your project. This is also true for remote deployments. Likewise, before connecting to the system, you'll only interact with the project's configuration and not the deployed configuration. It is important to differ these two. If you've changed the deployed configuration while being connected, you can update the project's configuration so that it matches the deployed one. You do this by right-clicking the application and clicking Fetch Configuration. This will also work for remote deployments. This was all for this tutorial, and I'll see you in the next video.